Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm continuing my research and using a Raspberry Pi Pico as low capacity data storage for my 6502 computer. Last time, we figured out data flow control using the programmable input output feature of the RP2040. We were able to output a byte every 20 microseconds or 50,000 characters per second. That's much faster than the 900 characters per second we achieved using MicroPython alone. I'm really excited about this potential, so why don't you join me as we reconnect the Pico to my 6502 computer and transfer some data, this time using PIO. In a previous video, we were able to transfer data between the Raspberry Pi Pico and my Timbay 6502 computer using Pico bit banging and the help of a little hardware. The limiting factor was the speed of MicroPython on the Pico. However, those limits are melting away the more I learn about the programmable input output features of the RP2040. You might want to check out my other videos to learn more about the PIO. Let's begin with the original MicroPython program and incorporate PIO data transfer. First, let's identify the code we don't need. We'll need to import some libraries, so we'll keep this. We won't be using interrupts, so the interrupt handler can go. Since PIO is taking care of the output, I don't need to isolate bits and then send them to GPIO pins. We can get rid of this and this. All of the GPIO pins are being initialized during the PIO instantiation, so this can go. Since we're not using interrupts, this is obsolete. We'll need this to read the file, so we'll keep it. With PIO, we're working at a bit level, so I don't need to convert from ASCII to decimal. This can go. Also, I don't have to set up a special case to start the data output, so this can go. We'll need a main loop to grab the data, but I don't need to control the data ready line, so some of this can go. Finally, we'll need to clean up the file system at the end of the transfer so this can stay. Next, I just have to add the PIO routine that we developed during the last video and clean up some of the variable names and assignments. Look at how much simpler the PIO program is compared to the bit banging method. Let's quickly review the program. First, we import the required routines from the machine, RP2, and time libraries. Next is the PIO assembler program. Here we set up the side set pin for the data ready signal, eight output pins for the data itself, and the output shift register direction so that we output the eight least significant bits of the word. The PIO pulls the data from the transmit shift register using the default block parameter, which will stall the program until there is data in the transmit shift register. After the transmit shift register has data, the PIO simultaneously outputs the data from the eight output pins and the data ready signal from the side set pin. Then the PIO stalls while it waits for the data taken signal from the TIM to go high, indicating that the TIM took the data. After the PIO program is released, this no-op instruction turns off the data ready line. Then the PIO waits for the next byte to arrive in the transmit shift register. We instantiate the PIO program for state machine 0 with a frequency of 1 MHz. We assign the first and only side set pin to GPIO pin 7, the first of the eight output pins to GPIO pin 8, and the first and only input pin to GPIO pin 6. Then we start the PIO program. I'll put in a statement to stall the main program until I type a carriage return at the monitor. 
Here we open the file that we want to transfer as a read-only file. Then we read the first byte of the file and enter the main loop. We'll print a period to the monitor every time we send a new line of 24 bytes. This lets us watch the progress of the data transfer. The data is sent to the PIO transmit shift register using the put method. The program will continue to loop until we read a null character, which indicates the end of the file, at which time we will clean up the data file and print EOF to the monitor, telling us that the data transfer has completed. The TIM monitor for the 6502 has about a 5 microsecond window after it sends the data taken signal before the data ready signal must go low, otherwise it will read the same byte again. Last time, I added a flip-flop to clear the data ready signal immediately upon receiving the data taken signal. But since the PIO can accomplish this in much less than 1 microsecond, I'm going to remove the hardware. Let's try it out. As I have in the past, I'm using Thani on the left to control the Pico and Hyper Terminal on the right to control the 6502. First, I'll reset the 6502 and enter the TIM monitor by typing a carriage return. Then I type H to turn on the TIM high speed paper tape mode. Next, I'll start the Pico data transfer program, which will initialize, then wait for me to release it. I'll type LH on the TIM monitor to load a hexadecimal file. Then I go back to the Pico and type a return to start the data transfer. Uh, the data seems to be loading much more quickly than before. It took a little more than 10 seconds to load in 26,000 characters. That's about 2,400 characters per second, almost three times faster than the bit banging method I used originally while eight times faster than the digital equipment high-speed paper tape reader of the day, it's still slower than a single density five and a quarter inch floppy disk drive. I believe the limiting factor is the speed of the TIM monitor. Even though we've upgraded the Pico to programmable input output, the TIM still uses bit banging, and with a one megahertz clock, it's pretty slow. Thanks for joining me today. We successfully and quickly transferred data between the Raspberry Pi Pico and my 6502 computer using the high-speed paper tape reader interface of the TIM monitor. What's next? Discovering the RP2040 PIO opens up a whole new world of possible 6502 projects. I can continue on my quest to develop low-capacity data storage for the 6502. But even cooler, the PIO is fast enough that the Pico could serve as a super cheap VGA video card. A viewer even suggested that I try to connect the Pico directly to the address and data buses of the 6502. And I understand that the RP2040 has direct memory access capabilities. I need to learn more about the capabilities of the RP2040 and I'll take you on my journey. If you like this video or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!